All right, everyone, welcome to part two, Rapture, the Bride's Last Call, Doug's Letter, and Dream. We are truly on the brink, on the threshold of the biggest event that will ever have taken place in the history of the world, the Rapture of the Church, and are you ready? Before we carry on with Doug's letter, let me give you a little information on Doug. I've known Doug for a number of years, and I love him dearly. He knows scripture inside and out, backward and forward. He has spent countless, countless hours just picking apart the book of Revelation. Let's continue on in part two, where we left off. And Doug goes on to write in his letter to me, the Great Tribulation is the final 42 months and has nothing to do with the first 42 months or the first half of tribulation. It is Matthew chapter 24, 14 to the end of the chapter that is all about the great tribulation and has nothing to do with the events leading up to the rapture. Yet many are all over this chapter in every verse picking pieces backwards, forwards, and out of context, proclaiming it is about things that occur up to and during tribulation. The during part has bearing, but the first half of tribulation has absolutely no bearing on these verses after Matthew 24, 14. And I want to add this right here, if I can expound on this for a moment. Satan has infiltrated every aspect of organized religion. He has taken scripture and just has twisted it. Let me continue on. There is no order whatsoever with the many who teach this or refer to these verses after Matthew 24, 14 as a pre-tribulation perspective. As for those who believe in the post-tribulation, uh, they get very confused and have a right to be when those pre-tribulation teachers who teach from Matthew 24, 14 to the end as being a uh, pre-tribulation experience. This is giving ammunition to the post-tribulation theorists that their post trib viewpoint as being correct and anyone teaching pre-trib viewpoint as being incorrect. The bottom line is this, anyone with a pre-tribulation bride belief that is teaching Matthew 24, 14 to the end of the chapter as pre-tribulation occurrences are only fueling the fires of the post-tribulation belief. And I'd like to add as well, it's not just uh, the teachers, the seasoned pastors or ministers, it is those that in 2011 that were awoken, babes new to the word, out there teaching this, and they have a following. Matthew, as an example. 24, 15, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. This is the beginning of great tribulation. Matthew 24, 15, to the very end of this chapter is all about the great tribulation period. It is directed at the Jewish people. The church has already gone at this point in time. Another example, Matthew 24, 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such as what not was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. How can this statement be any more plain? The first 42 months is not greatest tribulation since the beginning of the world. The first 42 months will be terrible. Terrible, but the 
the likes of which have never been witnessed before, even the days of Noah, with the much evil, enough evil that not one person other than Noah, his wife, his three sons, and their three wives were found worthy to escape it. In actuality, it was only because of Noah that worthiness of his genes were even found. So when does this all begin? Let's look to Revelation 6. Revelation chapter 6 verse 17. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? This is Matthew 24, 14 to the end of the chapter. Everything from Matthew 24, 14 to the end is all about the final 42 months. Now compare Matthew 24, 14 and Revelation 14, 6. Let's take a look at Revelation 14, 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Ever ask yourself, why is it an angel and not the Holy Spirit? Read on, please. Now let's look to Matthew twenty-four, fourteen. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. What is it that Yeshua, Jesus, is trying to explain? He is stating this as an order to the spiritual realm, to an angel who spiritually sets a command in motion at the timing of the final 42 months to teach the one true gospel to those who dwell on the earth and who become saved by grace during the most awful time period the earth has ever seen. Today, there are many false preachers out there preaching that they are the ones teaching the true gospel to all the world. They are not. Don't get me wrong. There are true gospels taught in very small groups around the world. This is not the same thing. This is currently small applications around the world by those who carry the Holy Spirit with them. Bride, Philadelphia. Now what is being taught around the world by the masses currently is truth mixed with deceptions, a commercialized love of money form of Christianity. This is not what these verses are speaking about. These verses are speaking about the final wrath period, also known as the Great Tribulation and final 42 months. The Holy Spirit is not dwelling in the hearts of churches, assemblies of people during tribulation. The Holy Spirit restrainer is removed with the church, Philadelphia Bride, before tribulation. The Holy Spirit, the restrainer, cannot be around that kind of sin. Now on to the dream. Dream and what prompted me to writing you this letter, PD. You are my only mouthpiece. If you feel led, you might consider talking to the assembly, not necessarily that it comes from a dream or that it comes from me. I certainly do not want anything to do with pride or the likes of it, but rather a reminder of what is to come very soon. I believe the reason I had this dream in particular is because the church is on the cusp of removal very soon, perhaps sooner than one can imagine. I rarely ever dream. To those who I write to, already know this. I also never record verses. I never record verse numbers in my mind. I know the verse. I know how and where to find it. I have probably devoted much time to study it, but to quote a verse number out of 
the get-go is a rare occurrence for me. I have to relocate the source in order to quote, uh, quote the verse number and the verse word for word. Some people have the ability to quote verses word for word or verse numbers. This is not one of my gifts. The dream. I woke up yesterday repeating myself over and over again to an unknown dream state. In other words, I do not recall any dream at all. I only recall saying Mark 219 over and over and over verbally from a deep sleep but continued into my awake state. And I want to uh, mention this because Doug had mentioned this in the live broadcast uh, over at Tiny Chat that when we are asleep, this is when Yahweh will speak to us. This is when Yahweh will share with us. This is the time when we are in our deep, deep uh, sleep state. I knew this was a message, Doug says. I have no doubts. I immediately went to the Bible and read the verse and said to myself, this is a verse that I know quite well. But to quote this verse and know what it was at the time of waking up would have been impossible for me to realize that it was uh, directly this exact verse. I know this verse very well as it is involving the removal of the one who restrains. I spoke briefly about this in the Thief of the, in the Night series. Here is that verse underlined as Mark 2.19. And the disciples of John and the Pharisees used to fast. And they came and say unto him, Why do the disciples of John and the Pharisees fast, but thy disciples fast not. And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. I want you to listen one more time very carefully. Who are these children? And the disciples of John and of the Pharisees used to fast. And they came and say unto him, Why do the disciples of John and the Pharisees fast? But thy disciples fast not. Verse 19. And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. My first comment about this verse. If you are not reading from the King James Version Bible, I am going to suggest toss your NIV, New International Version, ASV, etc. away and go get yourself a King James Version Bible and or the original Greek translated into the King James Version for reference. If you do not have the King James Version Bible and the original word written in Hebrew and Greek, then Q Bible is online and uh, then Q Bible is one online source that is Q Bible. The word children is the correct translation because when you get into the NIV and the amplified versions and the newer versions um, the translations get lost the meaning gets lost the word children is the correct translation out of all the Bibles I could readily locate only two of 29 recognize this as children I will show the translation in context after showing my findings, noting here, friends of the bridegroom. It's far too vague of an understanding of who the bride is. A friend can suggest a guest, one who comes after the chosen bride, or one who has not come as a child, or even one who uh, is an invited guest. Refer this to the uh, references to the parable of the wedding in heaven in Matthew 22. Out of the 29 below listed that I looked up, He's got a long list here. 
Only re two refer to the children, and of those two, there is only one I would ever consider using, and that is the King James Version. Not the New King James Version or the 2003 New King James Version. Only the 1611 and the 1769 King James Version Bible. Because Satan has also come in and infiltrated scriptures by means of the uh, New International Version, these amplified versions to where you lose. He doesn't want you to understand, have a proper understanding of the scripture. These are children spoken of. And the disciples of John and the Pharisees used to fast. And they came and say unto him, Why do the disciples of John and the Pharisees fast? But thy disciples fast not. And Jesus said unto them, can the children, this is so important, bride, can the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. This is so very important. Uh, and Brother John goes on, and there is a lot showing the correct uh, translation, Mark 2.19, King James Version, translated as children. This is the correct translation. Um, and Mark 2.19, WBT, uh, the correct translation, translated as children. The word used in the incorrect uh, translation, uh, he will explain later. He goes on to show you the NIV. Rather than children, they're translated as guests. The ASV translates the children. Rather than being children, the proper translation, their, uh, their translation is sons. The BBE translated as friends. The CEB translates the children as wedding guests. The CJB, they're translated as wedding guests. The R-H-E, children of the marriage fast. That's why you have to stick with the King James Version. Throw out, do away with the new translations, the NIV, the Amplified Versions, the new King James. And it just goes on and on with the improper translation of attendants and friends and guests and all of this is incorrect. Please. Stick to the King James Version so you understand Scripture. Matthew 22, the marriage in heaven, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son. Now, Doug leaves a comment. The marriage of the bride is already in heaven. The marriage to the bride has already taken place and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding and they would not come. These called are the invited to the wedding, not the bride. This is not the bride, they're the invited. Matthew 22:10. And the wedding was furnished with guests. Does this sound like the bride to you thus far? So first things first, any Bible that says guests, attendants, parties, sons of the spouses, children of the marriage fast, or friends is making a direct statement that this group is not the bride. That knocks off 22 of the 27 false translations from these new international versions, these amplified versions, and five that conclude as sons that can be correct, but only if used in uh, parallel context, consistent throughout the Bible, and to locate the true meaning of this word use. We're going to continue on in part three. Stay tuned. You don't want to miss part